took all summer to prepare that song. Welcome back. This is edition number three of this year, and joining me tonight are ESPN coaches Mike Gottfried and Jim Donnan. And I guess before we get into, I'd like to throw, I'll save Mike's comments on Arkansas and Texas until we do the recap. Jim, I want to, you had some thoughts on the Big 12 North. Well, you know, I'm such a great prognosticator. I picked Missouri to win the Big 12 North, and uh, <laughs> last week uh, we got a situation where not only did Missouri lose, but Kansas State went down, and, and uh, you know, we got a situation where Nebraska, with that West Coast offense, not looking too good. So the two teams that are really looking good in the Big 12 North are uh, Kansas and Colorado. So uh, I just think uh, everybody's been talking about how strong the Big 12 is. Uh, I really think you only got two teams in the league. And Mike, you alluded to that last night that, uh, you know, we got a situation with Texas maybe can challenge Oklahoma, but that doesn't look like there's anybody else, does it? No, I don't think Texas can <laughs> even challenge Oklahoma the way they're playing. Now, they've only played two games, but they can't find the football, can't throw the football. And uh, until Vince Young becomes a more complete passer, I don't think, Danny, they can beat Oklahoma. I agree with you. And uh, really, and you say they lost the running back for the year, Selvin too? Selvin Young. Mm. And that's a big, he's a big clog in there, a big uh, part of their offense. Well, I guess what we'll do is we'll talk about the games from last week. We'll review them, get any thoughts on them. And I think the first one we're going to talk about is Florida State and Miami. We should have some film on that. I hope we do. There we do. That's pretty good film. I could probably talk about that. They're running on the field. This sort of surprised me, not this, but the, the outcome of the game. Did you see the game, Jim? I know Mike Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, uh, very good defensive struggle. A lot of athletes on the field. A lot of pressure on these young men. Uh, both quarterbacks got to try to deliver. But Brock Berlin, you got to give him a lot of credit. He came back at the end to hit this tunnel screen and uh, got him into overtime. And you could tell right when they got into overtime they were finished, weren't they, Mike? Yeah. Oh, uh, Florida State deserved a better fate on defense. Their defense really played hard. Their offense did not show up. Uh, it was not a good offensive game for either team. And I think you said it best, the defense has dominated, but Florida State never challenged offensively at all. Just looked like a different Florida State game plan. A lot of different formations Formate I haven't seen from them. And, uh, and they just didn't look as comfortable running their stuff to me. And of course, Miami, year in and year out, Talk about reloading their defensive front and the, and the way uh, role played on the perimeter. I mean, it was just a dominating performance by uh, both defenses. It was very good athletic teams, both of them. This is a, one that Bobby Bowden's going to look back in and say, you know, we should have won this game. I, I was mean, a little yeah. disappointed in Ricks, but I uh, won't put the whole loss on him. And I was impressed with Berlin, like you said. This game, I'd have to get both your comments on. I, what I saw when Clemson was punting, they were in a normal punt formation. But let's talk about Clemson, Georgia Tech. See if we can see that play where they, with about 30 or 40 seconds to go, they, I think we're going to see that play where they tried to punt it. No video. Okay. Well, then. then well, here's the situation. You know, they're down 10 points with two minutes and something to go. Give Tech a lot of credit. They kicked the field goal and then held them on third down. But you tell your punter, if you get a bad snap, pick the ball up, kick it out of the end zone, do anything, take a safety, but don't fall on the ball. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that uh, gets coaches like me and Mike where we're not coaching anymore. I mean, uh, Tommy Bowden's an excellent coach, but when you're ahead 10 points with, it, with uh, two minutes to go, that's tough to lose like that. Would you have done? Go ahead, Mike. Go, uh, Danny's question is the punt formation. The punt formation is nothing wrong with that. Uh, you have uh, three big uh, offensive or defensive guys back with the uh, place kicker. That's a punt formation that was really developed in the Canadian League. And I like it because when you do get somebody through, they're going to have somebody else to get through uh, before they block that punt. The snapper can't use that as an excuse. Now, or anybody else, a fan can't use that as an excuse. It, it's a punt formation that they believe in. You got to do it. Yeah, and here's yeah. the thing again. Uh, you know, the, the protection part is what you always do when you got to get the punt off. That's for sure. But the, the punters work every day and talk about situations that are going to occur. The poocher punt, the, the kick, uh, uh, you know, if you get a bad snap in, in your head, this and that. But, you know, that's the last thing I'm sure the, the coach has oh, told yeah. that kid. You get a bad snap here, kick it out of the end zone 
know, running down the end. We'll take a safety and see if they can beat us. But, uh, right. you know, that's a, that's a difficult loss for uh, Coach Bowden. And, and I want to say this again. That, that had to be a tremendous burden on both of these coaches, along with Jeff Bowden, uh, trying to coach in a game with the loss of their, uh, you know, Coach Bowden's grandson and his uh, son-in-law. That was a tremendous burden on them all. Right. The next one is Ohio State and uh, Marshall. I don't, know if you saw Marshall. don't know if you saw that, but I thought Marshall should have won the game. It was a very competitive game. Did you have a chance to watch it, Jim? Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of my friends up in Huntington are low today. I mean, that was a great shot for them because Troy took them last week and uh, and everybody didn't give – I didn't give them a chance against Ohio State. But uh, uh, Marshall over the years has really played good on the road and has had some big wins, you know, winning in a lot of different places and uh, they really had a chance to win yesterday. I thought the Ohio State's quarterback kind of panicked a little bit in that ball game, especially in the fourth quarter because he threw up some passes that were just uh, impossible possible to catch and also very easy to intercept. Marshall had a chance to pull the upset, but you got to give Ohio State credit. They win the close games. Yeah, they are amazing. And it's the last one. This sort of surprised a lot of people. 13 Not and 1, 7 points or less. That's what they are. Yeah. That's what I heard. In yeah. the really? 13 and 1. All right, we're part of national TV, Michigan. Michigan and Notre Dame. Michigan, of course, outplayed them the first half. Three field goals. Couldn't get it in. And uh, Notre Dame, the magic of the Irish, took over in the second half. Everything was right for Notre Dame. They got beat by BYU on the road. Michigan's coming in there with a freshman quarterback. Everything was perfect for the upset. Michigan had a chance, Jim, early in this football game to put Notre Dame away, and they couldn't get anything other than a field goal. And I think that cost them because... Yeah, it really did. Yeah, but you can't get three field goals against a poor team like Notre Dame and then all of a sudden you, you're, you're sitting there and you're behind nine to nothing and then they come to life. And uh, Let's give Darius Walker from right down the road there, five miles from us, uh, Buford High School. He won 45 straight games with him uh, running the ball. And, you know, where was he last week out at BYU? I promise you he came in there and really gave him a spark. All right, and here's another one, Alabama, Mississippi, Ole Miss, a great win for Alabama. What impressed me about this game, Jim, I think it was the second, Alabama's second touchdown. Alabama blitzed, rattled the quarterback, caused a fumble. They blitzed, not sporadically, they blitzed an awful lot. Something I didn't see last year, something that I think Alabama fans, they were very aggressive on defense. Now, granted, Ole Miss is not the best team in the SEC, but when you play aggressive like that, and if they do play aggressive like that, I think they'll be successful. Well, Mike said last week, if they win that game, he thought they're going to be 7-0, and uh, it looks like that's what they got a good shot at doing. I take Get back on Arkansas and <laughs> South Carolina now. Okay. Uh, I'm so I, not going to put the whammy on you, but I'm you know, any back. way you I'm look at it, though, let's back. give give a little bit of credit yeah. to uh, Coach Alabama, Shula and staff. They're, they're, they did they're, an excellent job. Playing with a lot of authority and they're, they're playing with some poise, and uh, you know, there's no question that uh, Ole Miss is in some deep trouble. They, they don't have the players that they had last year. Plus, they don't have Manning, and uh, you know, where are they going to generate any offense? They they're just not getting any uh, running game or passing game going. And this other one. Mike, you got a comment on this. Arkansas and Texas, because ESPN, you and Ron did the game. It started out with a bad snap, like UNLV in Wisconsin in, in the afternoon game, the safety, and that, that the, uh, determined the football game because uh, they won by two points. Texas has trouble throwing the football. Arkansas played good enough, Jim, to win this football game. They really did. They got help from the crowd. They were in a position, if Matt Jones does not fumble in the last two minutes, they kick a field goal and win the game. No question about it. Uh, I got to see that last quarter, and you guys did a great job on it. Uh, just unbelievable uh, the, the way turnovers happen there in cl clutch situations. And Matt Jones uh, played his heart out. I mean, he's an athlete that play, and is really you got those little long legs, and he gets moving. You don't realize how fast he's going, and uh, uh, certainly. Uh, Arkansas has got a lot of good young players, and they're going to be good in the future, too. I mean, I thought they were going to be a little down this year, but they look pretty good. Yeah. As Mike pointed out in the telecast, you know, you call timeouts, your last play for Texas, not your last play, and you tell the quarterback, I guess, two things. Don't fumble it, of course. Don't. Whatever you do, don't run out of bounds. He runs out of bounds. Gave him a chance Could to win. Could have cost him. Well, oh, yeah. it sure did. Very fortunate. Didn't. Yeah.
But these guys aren't doing those things on purpose now. These are young players. <laughs> They're not pro. And you want them to, you know, just like the kicker for Clemson, you want them to do that. But uh, certainly how you react in those situations mean a lot. It's like you, Danny. We told you about what was going to happen early in the show, and you blew it. Is that uh, what it is? You know, so well, that, that same thing happened to Vincent Young, you know. No, but you didn't tell me as explicitly. I'm sure as Mac Brown told him, don't run out of bounds. But that's why coaches, are they earn their money. you got to say it positive, though. Do not say don't. Just say stay in bounds. <laughs> <laughs> protect the ball. If you say don't fumble, say protect the ball. Think positive. That, I, I, that makes sense. We have uh, Coach Ron Zook of Florida coming up. He's got a big game, and uh, we're going to understand put the telephone number up. So we'll be right back after a couple of minutes with Ron Zook and the telephone number. Wow. Okay, look at this. Sunday, South Carolina to replay at 3.30. That's a heck of a game. If you missed it, you got to catch that. Auburn, 9 o'clock. Wasn't a heck of a game. Tennessee, 8 o'clock. And then Georgia at 7 o'clock. So you get like a double dose there on Tuesday and Thursday. All on CSS. I believe we have Coach Ron Zook, University of Florida, on the line. Coach, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Is this Danny? I'm with, yeah, I'm with two of your uh, favorites, Mike Gottfried and Jim Donnan. Two coaches there. I tell you what now. <laughs> 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 they don't feel like I feel right now. Well, no, no we don't. <laughs> we're pretty relaxed right now, Ron. We're not, <laughs> we're not worried about our kicking team or anything no, like no. that right now. We're worried about Danny. That's yeah. correct. And that's something to worry about. Ron, tell me this. You please, we talked about it last year when we were down there. Mike and I were down there at Gainesville. And this year, Chris Leake, you pretty much pleased fighting with Fighting Gator touchdown club. Fighting right? You're right. Fighting there Gator touchdown. You, touch, you pleased with the progress of uh, Chris Leake? Absolutely. Uh, you know, he wasn't. Maybe quite as sharp as, as you know he you know yesterday as he's going to be, but I mean he's uh, he's just a different person. He, you, you can tell as a young man that he's just so much improved. Uh, uh, he just you know it's a lot of fun to watch him. You know he anticipates now. He throws the ball before the people are looking, and just you know it's just experience. And you know Ed Zombrecher's done a great job with him. Next question: Tennessee's freshman quarterback. I wonder if you had a chance to look at them. That was sort of a surprise when they started those freshmen. Well, I've I've just gotten through the uh, both both sides of the football and just started on the special teams, but uh, they're both uh, you know they're both very very talented. You can tell, and uh, of course Schaefer's a guy that you know I tried to recruit uh, here. Uh, he he wasn't interested in, in coming to Florida. We didn't really didn't get much in, uh, too much uh, uh, into it, uh, but uh, both are very very talented. But you know I, I know some of the problems that Phillips has gone through in the, in the sense of you know freshman guys, and and uh, you know it's it's hard to. <laughs> It's hard to play freshman in the Southeastern Conference. Ron, now that you have uh, your own ball club and you're, you're getting more recruiting uh, going in and you're getting more recruits each year, the difference to the people out there that are watching this telecast in how you prepare your football team and this football team compared to the last two years? Uh, Coach, I, you know, obviously, as you all know, it, it, there's no comparison. These guys, in, in the last two years, you know, they were great guys. We loved them. But these guys, uh, I mean, they don't ask questions. They just do it. They don't complain. They just do it. Uh, somebody said we had a rain delay yesterday or lightning delay yesterday. And, and uh, you know, they said, well, what would you do? I said, well, you know, our guys, you know, they'll do whatever you tell them to do. And it just uh, – uh, they know what's expected uh, of them. Uh, you know, I was very, very proud of them. Uh, the team we played yesterday, where there was a lot of cheap shot going on and late hits, and our guys kept their poise and you know, just the things that you know we talk about that they have to do. And and uh, uh, I was, you know, I just it's it just it's a lot more fun. It really is. Uh, when you look at the, your football team, uh, you ran the ball well yesterday, and I, I know I've talked to you about your offensive line a lot stronger and a lot better. No question, Coach. You know, you can tell these guys, have, some of them have been in the system for three years, and, you know, they're just they're hitting on all cylinders. And, you know, the other thing is we've got some depth. You know, we had the last two years we've had to make our depth by, by guys playing more than one position, and now we've actually got some depth. And, you know, you can keep some guys fresh. And, uh, uh, you know, so we're, we're just we're, – we really feel like this has got – we got a chance to – this has got a chance to be our best offensive line to date. You know, watching your team uh, yesterday, I was amazed at, at how many guys you were playing on defense. I know you were running away with the game, but it, it looks like you got some guys that can really run and got some, and trying to develop some great depth on your defensive team there, Ron. Well, Coach, we really did. We uh, we played uh, eight uh, eight 
League Nine defensive lineman and and play him quite a bit. And and uh, you know just for that, this is what you're exactly what you're saying is trying to develop some depth. Of, we're young anyway, so we might as well play them all. And you know we we do uh, we do run well, and that's obviously going to be one of our strengths is running to the football. And we played uh, you know we Brandon Siler, the freshman linebacker, he had 40 snaps yesterday and. You know, those are things that you know, are going to pay off down the road. You know, we really feel like he's got a chance to, to be a heck of a player for us as well. In fact, we end up as a football team playing eight true freshmen, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of them I think are going to be able to contribute down the road. And you know, the more guys you can play, I learned this from Coach Godfrey a long, long time ago. The more guys you can play, the better chance you got. And uh, you know, so we're we're trying to play as many as we possibly can. Looking at the East uh, early on, it looks like you got some powerful football teams. South Carolina played really good against Georgia. Obviously, how good Georgia is. Uh, Tennessee looked good. Uh, but going up to Tennessee, how do you like playing them this early in the year? I mean, it's always the one you're going to have to play. But uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, Coach, you know, it's really, uh, it's obviously, uh, it, it doesn't really matter what my thoughts are. We're going to go up there. Our guys are excited about it. They really are. And, you know, like I told him uh, after the game yesterday is, you know, last year, our second game, we went to, to Miami and we took 70 guys and 35 of them, it was their first road trip. You know, now we're going up there and, and uh, these guys, even though we're young, or they've been in this uh, hostile environment before and they understand the importance of, you know, this game. I mean, it's, you know, you can't, you can't paint it as a, you know, a do or die game because it's not. Uh, but it obviously is a big, big game because it's the first Southeastern Conference game. And, you know, whoever wins is going to have a little bit of a leg up. But still, the, every one of these games in the Southeastern Conference, and as you mentioned, the Eastern side is a tough, tough division, as both sides are. And you have to be ready to play every single week. But uh, this will be a lot of fun, and uh, we're excited about going up there. Ron, how many years did you coach at Tennessee? I was there three years. I was there 84, 85, and 86. And, uh, you know, so I, I, you know, I know a little bit about the, the, the Florida rivalry and, and, and what that's all about and uh, obviously the way the people are up there. And, you know, it, in, the, in the early 90s, this really turned into a, to a, to a big, big rivalry. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a heated one, and it's, but it's, it's a great Southeastern Conference game. Here's my final question for you, and I know you can go back to work then and uh, do something real important and get back with your team. How many times did you like to hear Rocky Top <laughs> when you were okay. coaching there? Now you you're coaching against them. <laughs> You know, Coach, I, I didn't. I, I didn't necessarily like listening to him all the time when I was there. In fact, my <laughs> oldest daughter. That's uh, that was the first song she learned to sing. Uh, was Rocky Top. But uh, believe me, you hear enough of that stuff when you're up there. But we're going to hopefully uh, be able to quiet it a little bit. All right, Ron. Ron, we really appreciate you taking the time. Want to wish you good luck. A little revenge game, and uh, wish your squad the best. You and your coaching staff also. I appreciate it, Danny. I really do, Coach. It's good. Good talking to you. Thanks an awful lot. All Take right. care, Ron. Take care. Bye. All right, I think we're going to take some calls if we could. First caller we want to take is Jonathan from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Jonathan. Jonathan brought his own band. <laughs> Jonathan, are you on the line? Well, I thought we could. I'm going to figure this phone system out before the year's out. We do have a beautiful studio. This is probably one of the nicest studios I've been in. This is pretty classy. And we're going to do phone calls the next segment. We're going to get it all squared away, and we'll be right back after this short break from the people that are sponsoring us. Thank you. the memory company back helping us out again this year and we've got some tremendous props here in the uh, studio uh, log on to www.memorycompany.com here's a good example of a great rocking chair that the old coach needs to sit in user friendly home friendly that's what the memory company's uh, starting to do now they got tremendous things for your house uh, a lot of different uh, things about different sporting goods uh, we're going to talk about mike you a little NASCAR. bit about nascar they now got, uh, jeff gordon stuff and uh, they got uh, earnhardt and, and the pro football and pro baseball atlanta braves i saw a yankee hat yeah right here i really mean this good. catalog i can't even pick it up it's so heavy they got so many things <laughs> let me tell you this just log on to www.memorycompany.com Com. That'll tell you everything where you can find all these different items. Uh, your favorite teams, anybody, professional, college, anything. You want a doormat, Shake you want a, anything for your house, you got it. 
Well, that's pretty cute. It was shaking the little Georgia Bulldog, Jim, like it's shaking the little items right well, there. Well, that was the start of the game yesterday. At the end, that dog was really <laughs> going pretty good. Now, it was barking loud at the end of the game. Okay, let's do some. We missed some highlights earlier. Mississippi State and Auburn. I think we have some video of that game and pretty much one sided. I don't think that was a real surprise. Any thoughts? No surprise. Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown took over that football game. Jason Campbell played really well, Jim. Yeah, so I think Jason Campbell was uh, playing with a lot of poise right now. And, you know, it's very comforting now you can turn handed to those two guys and make yards. And their defense really looks pretty athletic. I, I mean. like Auburn. I, I've liked them from the start, and I, I think they'll win this week. All right, we got a heck of a game here. I don't know if Mike had a chance to watch it, but uh, Joy, or I don't know, if Jim, if you saw it either, but Georgia, South Carolina, I watched just about every play, and we've got some video. And really tough. You're winning 16 to nothing, and, you know, you lose that game, but uh, it happens. I know one thing, South Carolina, they both played great. And this David Green that you recruited, Jim, is unbelievable. Well, he's got a lot of points. He got off to a short, uh, kind of a rocky start, but, uh, you know, losing their top running back, and then here comes a good throw over the middle to Reggie Brown. And I'm glad to see Reggie have a good year you know he's been hurt uh, ever since he's been there and uh, he, he's a tough kid and uh, I saw where he was a captain of the team yesterday and it means a lot to him to play for Georgia okay we get West Virginia Central Florida that's uh, not too much of an exciting game I think it went according to for Joe Leary's first game he's coached yeah yeah but I don't think there was any surprise there. West Virginia's got a pretty good team, and then a real game that West didn't Virginia get... might not lose unless uh, they got two tough games. They got to play against Virginia Tech and against Maryland, but uh, they got a chance to run the table. Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, we got to say Three Pittsburgh. Games, yeah. I don't know how good Pittsburgh is though this year. I don't I don't, what do you think? I don't. I'm not sure that they're probably average. Here's one that you two have been high on: Boise State. Well, Oregon State at Boise State. Boise State put a licking on them. I'll tell you about Boise. <laughs> Boise State. Steady. That coach, uh, uh, Coach nice. Hawkins. Right. Somebody's going to have to break out some major <laughs> Grovers to keep that guy there. Now that's like, he is. On, he is on fire. He and uh, Urban Meyer. I promise you, those guys are going to. Uh, Late in the game, they were. I had 53 to 34. <laughs> he aired take out. The, take the punt. Oh, yeah. They take the punt the down to the 10 yard line. Their quarterback was in on the in the last minute of the game running the get some quarterback. Experience. <laughs> he was getting some experience. But here's what you got to remember, though. This team lost a lot of good players. They led the nation in total offense last year. They got the longest winning streak in the country. You play on that blue carpet, they're down 14 to nothing. And here they come back and beat a team that played LSU toe to toe last week. Plus, that guy can coach. I'm and and I think it'll be coach. a heck of a matchup. He can recruit, too. <laughs> <laughs> Do, doesn't don't Fresno State and Boise they square off don't they? Oh, that'd yes. be a great game. Oh, yeah. That'll be possibly. I'd love to see one of them go undefeated. Obviously, they have a chance. Like to, do to that. see Utah go undefeated, oh, yeah. Fresno or Boise Wouldn't that go be great? undefeated. Be great, great for the, great for the quick, USA's got some teams yeah. too. Quick story. I was down there at uh, Louisiana Tech last night, and I'm talking to Coach Bicknell before the game, and he said, "You know, we got I got some good news and bad news that our teams want to know. Think we can be two and zero, but the next four weeks we play Miami, Tennessee." Uh, you know, Auburn. And then we still got to play Boise State and Fresno in the league. We just saw what they did over the last couple games. So, uh, tough he's schedule. He's looking at six and five hey, at best. Hey, hey, he's looking down the road at some pretty tough teams. Now, that athletic director's not a good friend of his. I don't no. believe. Did you talk to him about job security or anything like that? A contract or well, something? Well, he's got a, you know, he's got a good, he's got one of the best backs I've seen in a long time. Really? This Moats kid is outstanding back. One thing we can't talk about is job security. Hey, that's right. That's right. Uh, Oh, we lost ours. I don't yeah. know about that. You both have turned down coaching jobs. That's your fault. You're probably smart to do it. Well, I mean, how could we do this show for a coaching, man? <laughs> well, that's a we good point, too. Well, yeah, you can still do it. I can call hey, you on the telephone. Hey, we could get Ron, like Ron Zook. You could call us, and we'd be in the fetal position <laughs> thinking about that next week's game, man. I promise you, all of them are tonight. That game's history yesterday. The next one's, and you're worried about every team you look, looks great, you know, no matter who you're playing. Right. They look like they got better players than you do. Like you said, Ron Zook has already looked at the entire game. Film. It's unbelievable, but that's what you have to do. It's big time college Hopefully football. Hopefully, you left that all summer. Too, college football, high school football, high school, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Work. All right, let's go. Get up. Let's see, we only got about 12 phone calls. We got Brian in Athens, Georgia. Brian, are you on the line? Uh, yeah. You guys there? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, great. Uh, listen, I, first of all, I want to start out by saying I think Coach Donna ought to get a little bit more TV time. I think he's really a good looking guy and he's 
certainly done a great job on his tan this summer with his golf game. <laughs> hey, Brian, that's but, good. I, I know that you're going to ask me about Notre Dame. I mean, uh, we hey, need I, to talk about Notre Dame. Hey, I know, oh, hey, I've been on you all Dame. summer. This guy works at the Athens Country Club, and, uh, hey, he's got to feel good about his boys. I promise you, they came off the mat. They did a good job coaching those guys, and uh, I figured you must have gone out there and given a little pep talk this week, Brian. That's how they got going, wasn't but it? How good did Brian feel when you picked BYU and BYU beat Notre Dame? He didn't call you then, did he? Well, he's you know, he's, he's a golf pro, man. He's not a football coach. I mean, he, he's more about Tiger Woods. A and golf that. pro who I think kind of likes you. Oh, he's a good man. <laughs> I wonder good if Brian man. knows Steve Thomas. All right, we have Greg from Clemson. Clem I guess that's Clemson, South Carolina. No, from Martinez, Georgia, Clemson fan. Greg? Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Great. I've got a two-part question. Looking last year at how Clemson, how strong they finished last year, and then right after the season, uh, Bowden had that big coaching responsibility shakeup. And now I'm looking this year at them being so sluggish the first two games. Number one, why would you do that after such a strong finish? And number two, do you think that has uh, an impact on how sluggish they started out at the beginning of the season? I wasn't sure about his question. Well, you know, anytime you're, anytime you're the head coach, you got to make personnel moves based on what you think is going to help your football team be better. And I think uh, certainly uh, when you show a, a move like that, when you're in a strength position like they were, uh, finishing up the year like they did, obviously he thought he needed to make some moves. Uh, he changed his offensive line coach to D-line. He moved his tight end coach to O-line and made his offense, made a new guy's offensive coordinator, from what I understand. But, you know, uh, they played two really good football teams the first two games. And I promise you, we keep talking about Georgia Tech. Let me tell you something. It doesn't bother me to brag on them. They, these guys are a well-coached team, and uh, Wake Forest is going to have a lot to say about what happens in the ACC. I mean, uh, Clemson played two really good teams, and they go go out to play A&M this week, and uh, then they got to play his daddy down there at Florida State, who's still mad at him about last year. Yeah, you had a heck of a run last year. I don't think any Clemson fan could doubt that. We've got about a dozen phone calls holding, about two or three lines open. I think we're going to go out with my top ten and let uh, coaches Godfrey and Don and see if they agree with this top ten. Feel free to jump in. What do you think? So far, that so good? Texas too high. All right. Look what I did. How about that? Look the whack, the man. Oh, you got the whack. It's back. Wise. All right. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock live. The special guest on Sports Night is Steve, Bar Steve Barkowski. Barkowski, an old, a name from the past. Heck of an athlete. Good. Jim, you, you got something to say about him and others? Oh, he's a great golfer now. He, you know, he does a good job. But uh, I just want to make one point here. You know, the fighting leathernecks of Western Illinois yesterday right. ran up 98 points against Cheney. Mm. And uh, something's wrong here when that happens. You, you can't score 98 points. And then Johnson C. Smith gave up 83 to the Georgia Southern uh, Eagles, so uh, that's a lot of points. I agree with him. 98. Jim Donnan spoke to a team, high school team. Both of you did. In Washington, D.C. that had lost 19 straight games. They're 2-0 and this year. Right. Oh, yeah, they they won call the me every Saturday and they say, we won again. The, we need, to can, that we need to can that speech. Yeah. I heard it was a heck of a fire and brimstone. Hey, no, but you know, high school kids that watch this show, you know, being on a team is important to you, and being part of something like that uh, is going to be something you can carry the rest of your life to be able to sacrifice and be involved with young men and coaches that, that teach you some discipline. And uh, I just think no matter what your record is, to, to know that you played on a team really means a lot to you. You're on I would the agree. Team. All right, we got a ton of calls. Let's see if we can try to work them in. Allen in uh, Birmingham. Alan, are you on the line? Hey, fellas, how's it going? Great. What's your question, Alan? I just want to call and see if y'all could uh, give me some predictions and uh, break down the uh, Auburn LSU game that's coming up this weekend. We'll do that. We do that the last segment. We take the dartboard out. That'll be the last segment, probably 10 or 5 minutes to the hour. All right, let's go with Jeff in Troy, Alabama. How you doing, man? I'm sorry, Jeff? How we doing, man? Good night. We've done better. Excellent. Well, look, I got two questions. One, how, how can I saw the ESPN USA poll today in Missouri still ahead of Troy receiving votes? And secondly, Mike, I ran into your brother at the game the other night in Troy, and, and when South Alabama going to get this uh, football program started? I don't think ever. 
uh, South Alabama, uh, it seems like they're not interested in football, and Troy has proven what football can do for a program. They've uh, done a great job at Troy, Larry Blakeney. They upset Missouri. They played every other team, Nebraska, tight, and uh, they've won some big games, and that's what football does for you, and uh, South Alabama has chose not to start football. I think the next caller we're going to try to get through is Dwight from Decatur. Dwight, are you on the line? Uh, yes, my question has to deal with uh, how LSU will stop the one-two running back punch of Auburn. Uh, obviously, they're going to have to make Campbell put the ball in the air. How will they go about that? Well, Mike's seen them, and they have a pretty strong defensive front, don't you think, Mike? Eight-man fronts, uh, blitzing. Uh, you're exactly right. Jason Campbell's going to have to win that football game. Now, Auburn's not going to get away from the run. Uh, I believe they're committed to the run. They're going to commit to that uh, as being physical on the offensive line, but it's still going to come down Jason Campbell. The one great thing, as Jim said, when you have two running backs behind you, you're pretty confident because you can fake to those running backs and, and throw those passes and play action. I think that's what they'll do. What I was impressed with, with yesterday was the way Auburn's receivers were separating from the DBs, were, were running good routes, were doing some things in the open field that you know I didn't think they could do. And that's going to help Jason because you know you could go back there all day, as you know, Mike, as a quarterback, and, and think a receiver's going to be somewhere and then he's somewhere else. And uh, looks like they're, they, they showed a lot more of their package yesterday. And uh, But the one one thing you're going to see from Nick Saban, you're going to see a lot of disguise. Like, you know, you come out of the huddle and you think that free safety's right there, and then all of a sudden at the snap he's over here, you know, and, and you got the band playing, there's 85,000 people yelling at you, and you got to make some plays. Let's move that free safety yeah, over there. Yeah, I'd be free. All right. All right, we got Jamie <laughs> in Hattiesburg. Jamie, you're on the line. I just want to uh, congratulate Southern Miss on their win. And, um, Big win. You guys, what do you think uh, their chances are of going undefeated? And I also want to talk about Ole Miss and see if you guys think Ethan Platt should start this weekend. I'll hang up and listen. Not so fast on undefeated, right. uh, even after you win a big game. They have a bigger game Thursday. Yeah, they got to play. Coming. They got to play Cal, and uh, Cal is to me the only team that even's got a remote chance against USC. And uh, and uh, Jeff Bowers done a tremendous job there. You look over the years, he's played. Their slogan is play anybody, anywhere, anytime, and they've played everybody around the country. And it's good to see them close the deal and win a game like that. And uh, uh, you know they they really did a good job on defense. And uh, I think Allman at quarter back's going to get better and they developed last year and won the, the league and uh, played in the champion you know beat TCU there at the end and then didn't play real well in the bowl game but uh, they got a chance to, to have a great year I don't you know running tables kind of asking a lot yeah. You know, hey, how many teams end up undefeated every year maybe one Three. maybe two right. hey you don't find many of them I think when you look at Southern Miss's win over Nebraska, Troy beating Missouri at home, it just tells you about college football that you got a chance. And uh, I think Troy is really, their story is a great story. When you're in the football belt that they are, Auburn, Alabama, it's a great history of the program. They're building a history, and it's really impressive. Well, I mean, they've had great tradition. They won the uh, NAIA championship. Uh, Coach Gailey was down there, won the championship. Here's another program, Florida Atlantic. Here comes Howard yeah, Stellenberger, yeah. goes in and yep. beats the Sun Belt preseason favorite, the uh, you know North Texas. Daryl Dickey's got a good team there, and they go and beat them at. North Texas last night. And Hawaii and, uh, the week before. And made Hawaii the week before. Oh, Howard uh, giving Howard's a lot of philosophy. But, uh, you know, his goal is to get that team in the top ten, and he really believes he can do it. I believe he can do it, too. We're going to go with Jason and Mike Dow's Mobile, Alabama town. Jason. Yeah, hey, fellas. Uh, Drew Tate uh, looked pretty good for Iowa yesterday. And uh, I was wondering what you think Iowa's chances are in the Big Ten this year. And also, do you think uh, – Tom Kraft and San Diego State can pull the upset on Michigan. Michigan's coming off the loss to Notre Dame, and they're probably looking ahead to Iowa. I just wanted to know what y'all thought. Jason, they got uh, – San Diego State has Michigan right where they want them. Uh, of course, not in the right place, but they they still have them coming off the Notre Dame loss. And sometimes when you lose a game like that, the coaches go back and get your attention real quick of the players. But Tom Kraft's an excellent football coach. Uh, junior college coach that spent a lot of time out in California in junior colleges. We've got a lot of junior college players there at San Diego State. They'll be able
able to throw the football. I don't know if they can stop Michigan, although Michigan wasn't very impressive on offense against Notre Dame, but uh, that'll be a good football game. Let me answer think. this about the Iowa, too, because I think uh, when you look at Iowa's football team, very physical. Uh, they uh, take on the presence of, of a very physical football team. All three of the teams that beat them last year, they're getting, the, getting them at home. So they got a shot, but, but the real team that's a sleeper that's turned around in the league is Purdue. I mean, their quarterback's playing terrific. Uh, Orton, and they've got, they lost seven players to the pros on defense, but they're playing with a lot of poise. Would you say Iowa can win the uh, Big Ten championship? You know, after seeing Michigan lose like that and knowing they got those teams at home, I, I think they got a shot. I mean, I picked Michigan hands down, but uh, what do I know? I picked Missouri to win the other league, too. No so. shot. Uh, no shot on Iowa. All right. It's about a four, maybe a five-team race. Yeah. But I agree with Mike. I don't think Iowa win it. But it's uh, really close, and Purdue might win the whole thing. I like. You don't even think it's a long shot? <laughs> What's that? You don't even. He says no it's shot. It's a long shot. Give me it's a long, long shot. Long. Give me a long I'll, shot. I'll, I'll give you the safety. Try to get a safety bag. You trying to deputize my top. <laughs> Well, we'll be back with Comedy Central, and we've got a bunch of, oh my goodness, we've got callers holding Don't on. Cry, Dear, Don't hey, cry, Hey, we've got our first call from Dearborn, Michigan. Dearborn. Pretty, hang in there, Dearborn, Michigan. Charleston, South Carolina. West Bloomfield, Michigan. We've got a lot of phone calls, and we'll be right back. All right, look at this. That live NCAA football on CSS. You got the Big Ten game of the week. That's at noon. And the Tim team that Jim was talking about, Florida Atlantic, you can watch this team. They'll probably lay an egg against Middle Tennessee State. But no. Florida Atlantic is a force to be reckoned with. Never thought I'd say that, but they are well coached and well stocked. They're another team players. that started football and now has made a name for themselves in Division I football. Absolutely. They did it the way you're supposed to do it. And Always remember this. Just like selling your house, location, location, <laughs> location. Florida Atlantic's in a great place to get players just like Troy is. You know, the hotbed of football. I understand. Okay. Location, location. This is our first phone call. We have Steve from West Bloomfield, Michigan. Steve. Hi, guys. How you doing today? Good, Steve. I'm, appreciate you calling. I got a question for you. Lloyd Carr has obviously over-recruited the quarterback position at Michigan. We got three kids sitting there. It's Chad Henney, a true freshman starting, a highly recruited quarterback, Matt Gutierrez, sitting on the sideline yes. with so-called shoulder injury. Okay, injury, and Clayton Richard, another highly recruited redshirt freshman. Now, in my opinion, it looks like it's going to come back to bite Michigan because all three of those kids aren't going to want to sit the bench for the next three or four years there. What do you, what do you think is going to happen there? And um, did Lloyd Carr over-recruit that position? And it just looks to me that there's going to be a big problem down the line with the Wolverines. Never over-recruit the quarterback position because you never can have enough quarterbacks. And that reminds me of Peyton Manning and Brandon Stewart when they both arrived at Tennessee. Brandon Stewart and uh, Peyton Manning, as soon as he started, Brandon Stewart knew he was leaving for A&M. Uh, what you want is competition at the quarterback position. I think Lloyd Carr decided Henny's the best of the freshmen at present. He doesn't want to play the other freshmen and burn a year, but he might have to down the way. Uh, so uh, I don't think you have enough quarterbacks ever. Right, let's look at Tennessee. They got Ainge and Schaefer. Uh, you know, you, you can't have too many guys. You know, we had a lot of guys there when Quincy Carter started uh, for us, and three of them left. So, you know, those things happen to you in coaching, and you, you can't have enough players. Wouldn't you no. think he's just Gutierrez? I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he's Gutierrez. hurt. Gutierrez, oh, I got it right. He's hurt, so that's why he started the freshman, unless yeah. I missed something. Yeah, but but here's the other thing. When you start thinking about uh, have you over-recruited the uh, quarterback position, right. there's always a freshman out there somewhere that thinks he's better than what you have. And so you're always looking for the guys that want to compete and want to compete against the best. All right, we got Perry, another caller from Michigan, from Dearborn, Michigan. Perry, your question? Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. I'm going to surprise you. I'm a stray Husker fan in, uh, in Michigan land. Okay. okay. I try to keep them straight on uh, 
making sure there's a couple other programs in the Big Ten. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, a lot of the pundits uh, before the season started, and now even more so, keep comparing Nebraska to uh, um, Notre Dame with the West Coast offense. And I really look at more of a parallel with Florida with how the uh, Chris Leak uh, got started as a freshman to how uh, Joe Daly is being played there by Callahan. And I really look at him being able to do more of a Florida model because Nebraska has much more talent to work with than Notre Dame has in ch switching over to this West Coast offense. Here's the thing, though, when you're in Nebraska and you've, uh, you've been recruited as a lineman and a wide receiver, your wide receivers have blocked uh, for years. Your offensive linemen are tilted forward. They're coming off the ball uh, playing that option uh, football. All of a sudden, you got a guy up here, and it's almost like uh, you're not in Kansas anymore when uh, the coach comes in and says, okay, we're going to throw the football. you got to learn about pass protection. You've got to learn about uh, throwing the football, and I don't think they're ready. Yeah, they really aren't. And the, the point he made about comparing them to Notre Dame, you know, uh, last year Nebraska won nine games. Notre Dame won five. The other thing is uh, the style of play that they're trying to implement is not all pure West Coast drop back. They're using a lot of action passes because they do run the ball. But of all the teams that you don't want to play early in the season with an unseasoned quarterback, it's USM. You don't want to play Southern Miss. They come with everybody run that proud defense. They stack their backers. They come off the edge. And they confused daily. They ran some zone blitzes. Some of their linemen intercepted passes and uh, made big plays. And uh, it's tough on Nebraska because everybody expects them to win. You know, it's a lot of pressure. And uh, anytime you got change, you're going to have a lot of adjustment. And it's going to take them a little while. But uh, I still think it's going to be hard to throw the ball. We both coached in the Big Eight week after week when that kind of weather is tough, isn't it? And the wind, the cold. And Danny, it'd be like this. And Jim hit a great point. When you play Southern Mississippi in their defense, if you you see that lamp and the safety in that, about that the free dog safety and free right safety and, <laughs> and they all, all five guys in the snap of the ball they're lining up and all of a sudden they all move in the freshman quarterback it's tough I mean that's the last team you want to see in the last defense you want to see in the first week that's a great point all right we got uh, Jonathan and switching gears to Chattanooga Tennessee Jonathan are you on the line yes sir how you doing great uh, my question is what kind of action or actions need to be? Uh, what do you think need to be taken against um, Philip Fulmer Philip for Fulmer making a deal with the NCAA to take the heat off of Tennessee and getting Alabama into trouble? And furthermore, Tennessee not getting into any kind of trouble. Is it Jonathan? Jonathan, is yes. that your name? Yes, sir. Forget about it. Uh, it's over. Uh, Philip Fulmer didn't do that, and it's it's time to put this to rest. Uh, Philip Fulmer didn't do anything. Uh, what he did is he called in and reported some violations he thought by Alabama. Steve Spurrier called from Florida, did the same thing other coaches called. Now, whether the violations were there or not, he, he called and reported them, and just like yeah. Jim, you would do hey, the same the thing. The NCAA Forget doesn't make it. any deals, I promise you no, that. I mean, it'd no be deals. nice if they did. I mean, I'd like to make some deals with them over things, but I promise you they don't, they're, they're uh, a very uh, much of a aristocratic type deal. Uh, they, they just, they're up there on the top and uh, you know the one thing I hate to hear in NCAA I'd use say, a different word. Well, you know what the other thing, can't family oh, we won't do it, but no. one thing that bothers me no, is hear, hear Miles oh. Brand say that the NCAA is a non-profit organization. Right. I mean, they're turning out more. He's making $500,000 yeah, he, a year. He's How's making, a he's making more than that. That's more just than that. his base. He's got, uh, you know. He's uh, got an Airplane. Hey, yeah, he's, but uh, you know, like we say, when's the last time they had a meeting anywhere besides some spa? Right. I mean, they go, they, uh, they plan all these events, and uh, you know, we need to get a cut of that, coach. I said it on ESPN Radio, Danny. They should do away with the uh, with the NCAA. Here, here, they let's go. Let's they get ought to, let's they ought get to start away from a new it. organization that's in the uh, 21st century. Yeah, we could call it the Danny Sheridan uh, Network. No, that'd be yeah, nice. That might be that. a little too strong. All right, I think we're going to take another call. We're going to go to a break, <laughs> and then we're going, have, we're going to have Mush in our pick segment, and we'll be right back. All right, mayhem in the morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern, live. CSS, your source for sports and 
Now our favorite spot. I'd like the middle man who doesn't make the picks to take over for the prediction. Danny, here you see the record. I see. We're happy that you allowed us to come to here this Absolutely. week. And Mush, you on there? Here. Okay, I'm Mush, just you can have a I keep coming back, man. I'm coming <laughs> back right here. Marshall on Georgia. Marshall on Georgia, Mush. I, I like Georgia. Well, that's okay. certainly a revelation. Jim? Dogs. Georgia. Danny? Okay, yeah, LSU and Auburn. Mush. Pay I'm picking the Tigers. <laughs> You're not much. Both Tigers. First, first, first upset. I'm going with Auburn in an upset. Uh, it's a pick 'em game, so how you figure it's an upset? Only okay. you know that, right, Jim? The reason I said Tigers, I couldn't be wrong. Both of them, but I, I'm really going. No, with, we got that. I'm we going with LSU. That. You are going with LSU? LSU? Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm Danny. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to go with Auburn. I think Auburn probably be a slight favorite at game time. Ohio State. At North Carolina State, Mush. Another upset. I'm going with NC State. Okay. Oh, I hate Jim. That. I got to go with uh, Ohio State. And I'm going Didn't with you, a, uh, Yeah, my old school. Don't get on me there. I'm, I'm going with I'm going <laughs> okay. Ohio State. Uh, Danny? Yeah, I'm going to go with NC State. I'm really sorry to hear that Mush has taken them, too. Maryland, West Virginia. First test for West Virginia. Mush. This is not a test. It's not a test. West Virginia is going to be the national championship game. Okay, much. <laughs> Almost heaven. Okay, you pick him, West Virginia. West Virginia. John Denver. Okay. John right. Duchendorf was West, his name. Not right. John Denver. Denver. John well, Duchendorf. I didn't know that. Okay. Denver. I'm going to go with uh, West Virginia in a close game. Close game. Yeah. Florida, yeah. Right, Tennessee. Right down. Florida, Tennessee. Tennessee, Mush. Tennessee. Why? Uh, well, they have Ainge playing. I'm going to go with Tennessee. It just depends. Uh, I'm starting just, uh, to I like Tennessee. <laughs> I'm going with uh, I'm going with Florida. <laughs> I'm going to go with Florida. It's good to see he's picking them for the wrong reason. Okay, Louisville Mush. and Tulane at Tulane, Mush. Wow, this is a big one. Uh, I, I've got to go with uh, Louisville in about a 40-point blowout. Okay, Jim. I'm going with Louisville. Danny. S same here, Mike. Clemson at A&M, Mush. Texas A&M keeps rolling. They beat Clemson. Okay. Jim? <laughs> he trolling this at first victory. No, they won one last week. Yeah, I said this oh, their first oh, victory yeah. in a long time. He doesn't, he doesn't they keep know. Rolling. Hey, that's right. Uh, that's rolling. Are you yeah. remember the 12th man out there you yeah. stand up with? <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to go with A&M, too. Danny? And I'm going to also go with A&M only, not because Clemson doesn't have a good team, but I think they're going to be a little down. Georgia Tech at North Carolina Mush. North Carolina stinks. Georgia Tech. Okay, Jim. Tech keeps on the rambling wreck. Georgia Tech. Okay. Central Florida at Penn State. Penn State looked bad yesterday. Well, they looked real bad. Mush. This could end. This could end in a draw, a zero-zero draw. But I gotta have to go with Penn State. Okay. It can't be a zero-zero no, tie. No, no, I just want to be like Danny. I want to ride the fence. Who playing? Penn but State. Let me Central say this. Florida. Hey, Mike. <laughs> oh, they can ride the. He can ride the fence, but you have to know about overtime rules, okay, Mike. Right. Overtime. He's riding the fence. Like I'm going you, with uh, Penn State. Penn all State. All right. Okay. Let's get to Notre the Dame thing. and Michigan State. Now I'm going to add a game too. Notre Dame and Michigan State. Okay. Go ahead, Mush. Uh, I'm going to have to say I'm going to have to say Michigan State because Notre Dame shot all their emotion out against Michigan. Okay, Jim. I'm going to take Michigan State too. Danny, I, I am too. I'm really sorry to say that the upsets I picked, Mush agree. That's USC at BYU, Mush. <laughs> USC. No, That's a game no I got. It. USC. Yeah. Okay, Jim. Trojans. Trojans. And again, Mike will be doing that game. Can we say that on TV? Yeah. Mike will be doing that game on ESPN the Saturday of Troy. night. Correct. Yes, the men of Troy. The men of Troy. All right. Let's Who's go to take, call it. We've got one more. Is that, was that the other that game? Was it. I'm that sorry. Was it. No. All right. Good. Good okay, job, Mike. You came back a little yeah. last week. Darren, Darren let's, let's hear your question. Darren, real quick. We're almost out of time. Hey, guys. How y'all doing tonight? Good. Uh, my question is about the NCAA officiating crew. Uh, I want to know how you guys feel about the uh, – it just seems like uh, if, a, if a kid scores a touchdown or, or does a good play, the, the officials want to drop a flag at the, at the drop of a hat, and they, uh, they, they call it taunting and, and, and uh, too much celebration. You know, know what they're doing there, Randy? They're just enforcing what the uh, commissioners and what the rules makers are telling them to. Uh, you know, excessive entertainment, uh, I mean, uh, getting in the end zone and going crazy, I'll tell you what's not. It's entertainment right. for the fans. But let me tell you something. It's a double standard. How about basketball when a guy dunks a ball, gets up in a guy's face and does all that? They never say anything, never throw a tee at him. i like for them to loosen up a little bit, but certainly it's a You're team right. game. Randy, we got 20 seconds. Randy, can you answer yeah. real quick? What's your question? Real quick. 
All right, Randy, your history. Let's go to Doug in Charleston. Real quick, we got about 12 seconds. Well, hey. it was nice. We can't get them in. I was informed. All right, Danny. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next week, same time, same place.